Earlier in our news, our correspondent Felicity Ezewike spoke with Ayo Tubanjo on reasons why we have uh, we are losing, we are having loss of human hair rather. Hair shedding is part of everyday life. Despite its attendant challenges, the fact remains that hair loss is normal. According to research, most humans on the average lose around 80 strands a day. When it comes to hair loss, there are, no, there are so many potential triggers, which means it can be tricky to pinpoint the exact reason why strands are falling out. A senior consultant with Vinci Hair Clinic and the regional CEO for the group, Ayo Otubanjo, joins us in the studio to help us understand what causes hair loss and how to manage it. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. What causes hair loss? <clears throat> Is it natural? Well, there, there are several causes of hair loss. Um, there are what we call androgynous uh, causes, basically affects men and women. There are those that affect just men, and there are those that affect just women, or mostly men, women. Um, there are possibly about six types of uh, uh, hair loss or alopecia. Uh, you've got the androgenetic alopecia, which is the genetic form of hair loss, which affects possibly about 60 to 70 percent of men and about 40% of women as well. And then you've got traction alopecia, which is probably very common in Africa, especially in Nigeria, amongst Nigerian women, you know, to do with all the tight waving, you know, and braids that, you know, women do. And then you've got, you know, other types of alopecia, like alopecia universalis, which is really a medical condition. Uh, usually people that have autoimmune disease would typically uh, experience uh, alopecia universalis or alopecia totalis, which is the total loss of hair on the body. So they're different types types of hair loss. Um, the causes also vary, you know. So for instance, the androgenetic alopecia, well, basically you inherit the genes, you know, there's nothing you could do really uh, to prevent it except possibly to look out for the early signs, you know, which is when your hair starts thinning, you know, then you come to the clinic and we could then stop that process. Uh, is there other ways to identify when you begin to lose your hair or what could trigger it? Right. Um, like I said, you know, there are different types of alopecia. So, for instance, the traction alopecia, which is very common uh, with uh, African women because of the tight braiding. Uh, you normally see, you know, when you take the braids out, you know, the hair comes out with it. And over a period of time of doing the same tight braiding, uh, you seem to be losing more and more hair and your hairline is not being restored. Because basically the, the follicles in the frontal uh, area of the scalp are the most delicate. So when, when when you keep pulling in the course of doing a braid, you damage them and you kill them off. And that's why people go bald in that region of the scalp. Um, is it like um, only hereditary or we can you know, induce it by what we do? Well, certain, certain practices uh, induces hair loss. Traction alopecia is an example of induced hair loss. Uh, Sacatricia alopecia is another induced hair loss. I mean, that's even a more insidious uh, kind of hair loss because of, you know, the, the, the nature of it. Um, you know, the, the, but there are others, you know, that are not induced. They're not self-inflicted, should we say. Okay. You know, for instance, you know, alopecia areata, which is another type of hair loss, kind of sudden loss of hair. You go to bed. The next wake morning, you wake morning up and, you don't and have any patches, hair anymore. patches of hair is gone. For well, those that are induced, that <laughs> I, I'm sure a lot of women watching this program yeah. would want to know um, what are the possible treatments? Right. There are several possible treatments. Traction alopecia, for instance, once the hair in the fringe have gone, um, the only option is to have a transplant, hair transplant. And lots of people probably think, wow, can you really do that? The answer is yes. And we are doing it in Lagos. Uh, so you can have your hairline restored. Um, with regards to certain other types of alopecia, for instance, the psychiatric alopecia, that's more insidious because most cases, it leaves a scar on the scalp. And with scar, it's very difficult, you know, to get a successful hair transplant. So, you know, that's why, you know, we tend to, you know, pr uh, prescribe a different course of, uh, of action for somebody. How lasting is this uh, transplant and what are the possible effects uh, to the person's health? Transplant is permanent. Absolutely permanent. Once the new follicles have been implanted surgically, which is what we do, 
that's it. They last forever. As long as you don't go back to doing all the bad things that you were doing to lose your hair in the first place, you'll be fine. And there aren't any side effects. It's, it's what we call microsurgery. It's not even major surgery by any means. Okay, how can people who have experienced hair loss better manage it? Especially, I know that it could be expensive to get mm. this hair transplant done. Mm. For those that don't have that kind of money and still want to maintain uh, their hairlines, how can they do it? I think prevention is better than kill, like the saying goes. Uh, so taking active steps to prevent the hair loss, and this is one of the reasons why you know, I'm, hope, you know, I'm on your show, you know, to educate people. So for instance, you know, when you go to a salon, and one of the salon attendants is about to apply some product on your scalp, I think the sensible thing to do is to look at the product and actually see whether it's been approved for human you know, use. You know. And usually you look for signs such as the FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration in the US, or NAVDAC in, the, in Nigeria. If a product hasn't gone through that testing, that rigorous testing process, don't allow anyone to apply on your scalp because you don't know what you're applying. You could be applying some really, really toxic, very damaging chemicals. Thank you very much, sir, for coming on the program. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me.